my question is regarding china in china we can <coughs> see there is a different uh, political setup where the power is centralized at the union or the central level <coughs> but still the uh, china was able to emerge as a emerging economy so my question is is democracy inimical for the economic development or is it an inevitable for economic development great question arjun one of the popular themes of discussion in the world in the past 30 40 years is that democracies probably cannot grow fast particularly emerging democracies the notion is that democracy is a great experience culture and history mature democracies as they call they probably could grow but other countries probably cannot grow as democracies and therefore they cite examples like china is a most spectacular example in the past 30 40 years taiwan it's a remarkable success story but early part of it is authoritarian south korea now they are democratic but for 20 30 years under park chung hee etc they were autocratic authoritarian and to some extent though it's not entirely an authoritarian model but a semi authoritarian model of singapore and these examples particularly reinforce the image that uh, democracy and development don't go together i would argue against it i think this is a complete misreading of the situation whenever these countries acted democratically rationally and sensibly they did very well whenever they acted in an authoritarian manner as a dictatorship they spectacularly failed take china which is a comparable country to india as an illustration because you know it's large in size ancient in history diverse in society very much like india in many ways china tried authoritarianism mao zedong's rule until deng xiaoping came as unadulterated authoritarianism with populism the great leap forward was a great illustration of what authoritarianism could do to a society Now, between 1958 and 61 because of authoritarian policies which are not countered by the society or the players in the state system but 20 million more than 2 crore people died of starvation because they were authoritarian they simply subjugated the people shut them up it was a spectacular failure not success take the cultural revolution more than 90% of the nation's cultural and intellectual assets the human assets or the cultural assets their uh, their heritage was destroyed in the name of cultural revolution people including deng xiaoping or the current president xi jinping they all suffered during cultural revolution and the country suffered severe setbacks and from 48 to 1978 despite some other sound policies which are typical of socialist societies namely education spreading some minimal health care available etc despite that China's per capita income was lower than India's. It was only when they embraced the democratic principles in organization of certain elements of the state structure. They may not be a democracy as we traditionally understand elections and freedom to speak whatever you do or demonstrate. But they were democratic elements, decentralization. Decentralization of power is a democratic element, whereas centralization is an authoritarian element always. Orderly succession. that is democratic authoritarianism is by the force of the gun most setting slogan is power comes from the barrel of the gun orderly succession of power rational public policy you know there are think tanks which go into evidence and logic and come up with various sets of options and then the party leadership decides what is the policy so a rational approach to public policy meritocracy not the leader's son or a protege but meritocracy people tried and tested and not only with educational skills and background but also experience in running affairs in the public uh, domain they are allowed to uh, flourish so once they brought in these elements china has succeeded chinese local governments today for instance spend about uh, 40 50% of the total public expenditure in the country in india it's 3% that means however painful it is to accept we in india must recognize that in some respects china is far more democratic than very highly centralized india so our notion that democracy means vote and shout you vote without an understanding what the vote means often times is more of a celebration and a jamboree and you protest from next day onwards we think these are the only elements of democracy yes they are necessary for democracy but they are not sufficient there are other conditions which china is probably fulfilling even if 
they are not fulfilling the elections, universal franchise and elections at every level, and this complete freedom of expression. So I would not agree with the notion that uh, dictatorship is necessary for development. Sir, my next question is, uh, recently we have seen a uh, protest in China, uh, like a protest against the uh, current policy of lo lockdown policy. Uh, in that protest, they were asking for freedom of speech and they were asking freedom of press. So, even the people who are asking for freedom, the, it, still the country is following the model of centralized political power and uh, emerging as a, emerged as a leading economic power. So, is China is an exception of following such kind of model or is it sustainable in the long term, the model which is following, uh, China is following? No, there are two elements in this. Deng Xiaoping evolved an extremely sound model slowly democratizing society and his own party, liberalizing the climate and society and the state. And that's why the things that we discussed, decentralization, rational public policy, orderly succession, meritocracy, all these he embedded in the Chinese polity. For 30 years it ran reasonably well, around 1980 to 2010-12 or something. Xi Jinping eliminated two of these pillars. One, orderly succession. Earlier clockwork like for 30 years, there was every 10 years a new leader came, next generation was allowed to rise and so on and so forth. Now this man became another Mao Zedong now. It's entirely up to him, his own whim, how long he'll be president until his death or when he wants to retire, uh, is on his feet kindness. No, there's no system any longer in place. The second thing that he has done is, in place of a rational public policy, he brought in two elements. One, jingoism, to perpetuate his dominance, excessive frenzy of nationalism, and therefore, saber rattling in respect of uh, Taiwan. With our own India, for instance, uh, some kind of border skirmishes, needlessly provoking animosities and anger, that sort of a thing, one. And two, taking an irrational policy decision and sticking to that. The zero COVID policy at this stage, without allowing herd immunity to develop in a systematic manner, was obviously doomed to failure. Economic consequences and people's frustration with the curtailment of liberties is inevitable. And now suddenly, because the public pressure is there, they are releasing everything openly, and therefore that also leads in consequences, though in the short term. So, in some ways, the protests there are essentially a reflection of people's anger about these two elements. The rational policy is undermined. Orderly succession has gone. A dictator is now firmly in place. In the place of a collective party dictatorship earlier. And once that happens, with prosperity, people also want more freedom, the democratic models. Now I think he is trying to correct at least some of it. Bringing back economic activity and removing the zero COVID policy without publicly stating so, is, is actually a containment operation. Uh, is trying to salvage something in a difficult situation. In the medium and long term, it's a questionable proposition. There are many scholars who disagree on this. Uh, but I agree with those who believe that with prosperity, free trade, better education, innovation, inevitably democracy will have to follow. Otherwise, the schism will be intolerable. Deng Xiaoping understood that. That's why he tried to liberalize increasingly without losing control, because of a fear of anarchy prevailing in society. Whereas the, the Xi Jinping is actually trying on occasion a traditional authoritarian model without allowing economic growth uh, leading to liberty and greater sense of democracy and participation. And that will be uh, detrimental to China. In my judgment, the proximate danger to China's economic growth and social stability comes from Xi Jinping's policies. If he changes them, then probably Communist Party's legitimacy will continue for quite some time and they'll slowly liberalize and one day, we don't know when, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, they'll become democracy as we understand. If he doesn't change them, there could be tremendous potential for an explosion. 